Um, so, colleagues, a question, but, but perhaps if I can ask the first one to, uh, to just go back to the issue of finance, because uh, it's central to all of us. Looking at the broader uh, picture of world finance and global finance, would you have an overall prognosis uh, for where matters are going? We have li major leadership changes in China this year, the United States, uh, Europe that's struggling, but what is your prognosis for the medium term? There will still be pressures uh, on everybody to become pessimistic or if they want to be euphemistic about it, to be guarded. <laughs> you know? And um, when we were in the APEC uh, meet in Honolulu, Madame Christine Lagarde talked about the need to enhance domestic liquidity. And um, to be honest with you, it really made me pause for thought because it seemed like we were headed towards the same situation that existed before the Great Depression, wherein everybody felt that they could successfully insulate themselves from uh, the downturn in various other economies, which in turn actually accelerated and deepened the recession and that led to the Depression. So one would hope you know, that uh, man has a capacity to improve. We have the lessons of history. And um, we, I, I was asked by President Obama, and if, I may, if I'm not mistaken, the Prime Minister of New Guinea to also intervene after this talk. And we said, shouldn't this be the point in time that we should be finding ways and means to help the so-called weakest link in the chain? So either we stand together or we drown together. Um, there is a school of economics that uh, was taught after I graduated that talked about perceptions. If the perception is we will, if things will get worse, it will be self-fulfilling. And it also can be uh, self-fulfilling in the reverse angle. So um, the um, government, especially, well, you mentioned Europe, are being asked uh, to finally address the situation that used to be the proverbial can that got kicked down. Right? I'm sure that um, very reasonable men are talking, and women, and that we will be coming to solutions that um, demonstrate our, all our collective capacity to improve as a species. So how long will the continued malaise happen? Mm, the conservative will say uh, quite a bit, but I'm, I tend to be optimistic as far as the human spirit is concerned. I think what we have managed to do in the Philippines uh, will happen uh, varying degrees elsewhere. We, I can't tell you that we are about to crest the hill, but I think we are approaching that crest. All it takes is a little bit of faith and optimism in our fellow man. Otherwise, you know, we will accelerate uh, the process of, make, of, of suffering for everybody. Thank you very much. Friends, is there a question for the President? A little shy. Someone over here? Thank you, sir. My name is Angelo Estrera. I'm a Filipino-American from PwC, based out here in Australia. Firstly, I'd like to say it's uh, very inspirational. I'm a very proud Filipino, and what you've done to uh, get rid of the corruption within the country is, uh, I can see and feel uh, with my dealings here in Australia and Asia, it's really bringing a lot of optimism uh, to the country and to the rest of the world. My question would be is, with the Philippines having such natural resources, both in mineral resources and in people, what industry sectors or services are you really looking to focus in to really bring the Philippines as the new tiger economy in Southeast Asia? There are three particular aspects of the economy that we are uh, very keen on. First, of course, is to meet the infrastructure need. Second, low-lying fruit that we have identified is tourism. The third, obviously, is agriculture. In, in terms of tourism, we are very happy to note that um, our target for by 2016, when I step down, will be from a base of about 3 million tourists annually. We will now have a base of 10 million. So a year in, more or less a year into the into office of our new Secretary of Tourism, we are already on target to meet 4.6 million tourists by the end of this year. So we're almost halfway there with just uh, slightly above a third of, uh, of our term into office. Um, in agriculture, the Secretary of Agriculture is present with me and in his presence, I will repeat 
He has promised that by next year the Philippines will be self-sufficient in rice, where previously we were conditioned to believe we had to import a minimum of 1.3 million tons of rice. And if weather cooperates, I am told that we might be exporting the higher varieties of rice. Of rice. So which will make my visits to the countries that we used to export, uh, import from that much more pleasant because they always told me that they studied in the Philippines, they learned the lessons so well that now the masters have to eat from the, uh, the toil of the student. Okay. In infrastructure, I think um, the, the economic team is present. We are trying in support of the tourism venture and also for connectivity, we're improving a lot of our airports. Uh, there is a new proposal for a new nautical highway to link Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao that will cut down travel time from three days to 15 hours, which is presently being studied. This is a collection of a uh, roll and roll of uh, ports and highways that will connect the same. Um, light rail systems also. Um, Manila is a very old city. It has, it, um, urban planning probably was not yet invented as a concept when it was started out. And unfortunately, when it started existing, too many, too few people rather paid attention to it. So we are, I would want, I would not want to be the one to kick the can to the next president. We would try and solve issues like flooding, uh, how to make, how to move 14 million residents in, in the national capital region move more efficiently and work more productively. productively. Sorry if my voice is deteriorating. I assure it's not because of singing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.